Uh, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I can tell you how we're doing it, if it's any help to anybody. Uh, we couldn't do it for our little parish, we couldn't afford it. And the other parishes couldn't do it for their parishes because they couldn't afford it. So eight parishes have come together in the first phase of our network plan. And together, eight parishes can afford their own backhoe without buying it off BT. We couldn't afford to buy it off BT. They wanted £370,000 a year for our feed. But uh, the network designer, who some of you might have heard of, Barry Ford, he uh, has planned this new network himself. And he has got it for 82,000 a year, which we can afford. Uh, so the first phase is to connect the eight parishes in the first year, and that is our core network. We're ducting our network, we're not direct burying fibre. Um, we've got 500 nod road crossings, we've got 13 rivers, I think. Um, the whole plan is on the internet if anybody wants more information. The business plan and everything is public. Uh, so we're using 16 mil, uh, 16 mil ducting and the core network will have six or eight of those ducts together in a pipe and that will go straight through the farmland and instead of going in a straight line we're going from farm to farm to farm to farm connecting 340 rural properties in the hardest to reach places in the country. So it's upfells and moors and ditches and everything. It's the hardest place of all to do. And we're doing that first as the core network. That big is um, 165 kilometres. And the second part of the dig is brings it up to 265 kilometres. The whole project's cost 1.86 million. There's no public money involved. There's no funding involved. Uh, it's being raised by investing and uh, shares from the community. The whole cost of the dig itself is £600,000 and hopefully most of that is being done by the farmers themselves who will be paid in shares. So the farmers will dig through their own land if they want to. And, and from all the public meetings we've had, all the farmers are quite happy to do that. Um, and the backhaul is straight into the geo pipe at Quorma and straight through to Manchester. The second, that's 10 gig to Manchester. And the, the end of the network, so it's like a circle, is into the geo fibre again at Arcom. Again, 10 gig that way to Manchester. So if there's a break, the other side of the network will keep it up. So it's redundant. The hub is in Quorma. The hub is like a little hut attached to the Methodist Parish Hall um, and there will be an eight hour battery backup in that. Each customer will have an hour's battery backup so that means if they choose to they can get rid of the BT phone line which goes a long way to paying for the monthly charges. The monthly charges will be 30 pounds a month for a gig, symmetrical, which is a thousand times faster than any of them could dream possible, well, at least 500 times faster than the government to USC. And that's all been costed out, it's been crawled over by everybody, it's been criticised by everybody, and nobody can say it's not going to work. So we're going for it, and that's what we're doing. And if anybody wants any more details, they can talk to me on this. B4, B4 RN, it looks like Barn, but it's 4.org.uk. Yeah, I've, I've met Barry before, he's a great customer, he's a great customer. Yeah. But he's been building networks all his life, he built Cleo. Yeah. So he knows all, all the problems and he says you can never have a build proof plan and it's going to be hard, we all know it's going to be hard, but nobody else is going to do it for us, so we're doing it. Um, when he built Cleo, he had the perfect plan for Cleo with its wireless, you know, because Cleo was wireless. Um, and then they went and got foot and mouth, didn't they? Really knackered his plan, but he still got it built. You can't plan for everything, but you just have to do it. You may hit me now. Yeah. All right. <laughs> just we have a question about how you raised the money, really. You, you, you sort of glossed over that a bit. Uh, how where we raised the, the money? Yeah, where did, how so we the raised parishes the money? could afford it. Well, yeah. Where did the money come from? Um, well, what we're doing is we're asking the community to invest in the company. The 
the company is registered with the FSA, Financial Services and whatever, um, and it's a it's a community benefit company. It's not a community interest company. It's for the benefit of the community. So the people running the company can't pay themselves a lot of money, and they can't spend it anywhere they like. It's got to be spent within the community. So we're employing people within the community. You know, we're training people up like John at Lucy is going to train our fibre slices up and another company will train something else and, and the skills will be kept in the community and the farmers can dig anyway. They're digging thicker water piping all the time. I've ducked into the farms, there's only seven mil up to a farm. So anybody can dig that in to our standards in training. But the, the money to pay for it all um, is from shares. So you invest in the shares, and if you invest enough, you get a free connection for a year and a free actual connection. Um, and also, it's registered with the EIS scheme, which is a new government scheme, which means anything that's high risk, and this is high risk, um, is eligible for 30% tax back. So if you get £1,500 worth of shares, you get £450 check back off the government. So your shares are still worth 1500 You also get a £150 connection fee knocked off and 360 for your whole year's £30 a month. You can also sack off your phone line and all that, so that's saving you a fortune. So at the end of three years, if, the, if enough people have signed up and invested, we can afford to start paying the shares back and you'll get your full 1500 If we can't afford it the first year, then you can't have them, that's the risk. But as soon as we can afford it, and we think in year four, we'll be able to afford it according to our business plan, um, you'll get 5% interest, which is more than you're getting now. I mean, you've already had 10% a year interest, haven't you? Because you've had 30% back. So a lot of people are saying, well, it's a no-brainer, we'll sign up. But it's getting the people to understand it all, and it takes three quarters of an hour to explain it all, and, you know, that's where the community effort comes in. Like Lindsay says, it's finding out where your holes are and your electric wires and everything else. It's also talking to all your people and saying, look, if we all work together, we can do this. If only a few of us want to do it, and you lot don't, we can't do it. But if you all work together, and having these parish meetings, you get your vigilantes in, the ones who understand the difference between a meg and a gig. So they come to the meeting. They go off and they spread the word to the neighbours. Evangelists. <laughs> <laughs> disciples, disciples. So you get your apostles and then you get your disciples and then you get all your converts. And when they actually understand it all, then it, it's absolute no-brainer. You can do it yourselves. You really can. And if we get this network... If, when we get this network built in the eight parishes, it then moves on and the other parishes are already saying, well, if you go in there, why can't you come to us? And we say, well, if there's enough of you, we'll come to you too. So it's already expanding before it started. So then you get all the parishes and you end up going all the way around the town like they're doing in America. They're doing that, aren't they? All the little people around the towns. And then in the end, the towns say, well, we're paying $60 a month for 20 meg, and you're paying $30 a month for 1,000 meg, can't we have it? And the telcos will then say, oh, good heavens, look what's happening, we're going to have to give the towns more. So we will make the towns pick their ideas up. And, and BT and everybody else will stop whinging and just get on with it. In the ideal world. In the ideal world. <laughs> the minimum investment is your signature to sign up to take a service. If you want to put money in, it's £100 up to, an individual can invest up to £20,000 under the EIS scheme. So if you've got £1,500 in, that's the bar that we've set for um, foundation member. Is it foundation, foundation member foundation with a three member. years connection. And you get uh, one free, it will normally be a £150 connection fee into the home, you get that for free, you get a free year's service, and plus you get all these other benefits, 30% tax relief. Um, like hopefully we'll go into paying a dividend in year three, four, whenever, offer a buyback scheme for anyone who wants to sell their shares, and, and the business plan is predicated on the fact that uh, we could actually, the way things are looking at the moment, buy back everybody's shares within 10 years. Now BT are never ever going to offer you this opportunity. 
So we hope it's replicable. And we're working on a fail quickly basis in that the community have to get behind us and our deadline is 1st of November for checks. And if it doesn't work, we'll all go back to, you know, digging drains up around our own villages. That's not long way. I'm so no, no. how far it's going. We're doing okay, aren't we? Over a third of the way at the moment, but there's a lot of people who haven't really, you know, it goes on the top of the kitchen table pile, and then the newspaper gets put on, and, and people haven't really realised just how short our deadline is. A lot of the leaflets just went straight in the bin. But what we're finding now is that because word's getting out, so there's a community just higher up the, the fell than us called Tatum, and they're all desperate for it, and they've all signed up, and they're all talking about it. And the people in the village are saying, oh yeah, we got one of those leaflets last week, and I haven't read it. And so now they're going to the post office to pick up a leaflet. So luckily we printed 5,000. Yeah, we did, we printed both. <laughs> it was just, you see, it was just as cheap to print 5,000 leaflets as it was to print 1,000. In the same way for us, for our backhaul, for our community, it is as cheap to put 1,000 meg in as it is to put 100 in. So I don't see the point in, in saying 100 meg when you can have a gig. So we're having a gig. And we'll be the fastest rural network in the whole world, apart from East probably. <laughs> <laughs> if he wasn't there, I'd have just said we'd have been the fastest network in the world. He's there listening. <laughs> Can I ask you how you're going to manage it? It'll all be managed by professionals. It's not me running you're it. Sub effectively subcontracting it out. No, 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 no. Um, we've already got within our communities technical people. Right. And it's really interesting because on our register form, it says, have you any skills you'd like to contribute in return for shares? And we're getting all these people coming out of the woodwork. Some of them actually are working at Clio now. <laughs> it's really funny. And they're saying, you know, if we have skills in this, we would like a job doing this. And because everybody will be on a gigabit pipe, we don't have to have a central office where you all have to pile in every Monday morning. This work can be done with smartphones and, and remote workers. So we've got people offering uh, remote backups, you know, to, um, you know, when you ring Delhi, well, we'll have 20 people always on call, and it will go in order of the people who are on call, and as they answer calls, they'll get paid, and there'll be uh, feedback, so that if they're not doing a good job, if they're useless at it, then we won't use them again. Uh, technical, yeah, fibre networks don't need a lot of maintenance, they're not like the copper ones. The main problem is, I mean, if an optical light unit fails, it's like a bulb will blow, but it's easy to swap one out. There's, there'll be spares for everything. There'll be generators in the hubs. There'll be five hubs in five different parishes. The main hub will feed the five baby ones, if you will. They'll all have generators. They're under contract from a firm in Garstang who will be there within an hour if, if a generator is kicking in because of a power cut to top up the generator. You know, there's no way it's going to go off. If a farmer digs into it, it can be in the daytime because they don't tend to dig holes in the night. So there'll be fibre, there'll be people trained to, to lay the fibre, and then there'll be people who are already trained to mend it. We're buying our own fusion splicing kit, two of them. We're training four splicers. They will always be within the community to mend anything. Um, the whole thing will just work as fibre does. My fibre just works. I, I, I help run two Wi-Fi networks and, I, and it's a lot of work. You're always turning them off and turning them on again and swapping out kit and radios going, antennas get blown off or trees grow. There are a lot of work for Wi-Fi networks. But I've got this mini fibre network of my own that I've never touched. I've never touched it. I don't have anything to do with it. It just works. Thanks to John and his fibre slicing. <laughs> but that's it. Fibre does just work. So it, it, do you have a service level yeah. There will be all that. There'll be all that, yeah. There's lawyers all crawling the over everything. Like the backup and all that structure will be visible to you. Yeah, it yeah. it's it has to be. Yeah, and it's only a risk in that enough people won't take it up and we fail. But nobody's money, nobody's checks will be cashed. If we're going to fail, we'll fail quickly. That's the risk. But. The risk long term, there isn't one because it is a superb plan. This man's built networks for 30 years. He's still building networks in London and all over the place. He knows his onions. He'll do one for you. We'll join you on to us. Yeah, we're phase four. 
There's phase one, two, three down in Lancashire, and the reason why it's called broadband for the rural north is originally it was Lancashire rural broadband, and I went, where do I fit into that? So we called it broadband for the rural north, just to make sure that... But this, this particular feed we've got will service 200,000 properties, and we're putting 1,300 on. If they all took a service, we'll, we're sustainable with 662. And, and we'll actually make spare cash every year with that amount of people to start paying back in dribbles for shareholders and a bit of interest. But if we got, you know, more than 50% take up, we would, you know, be able to motor. And, and, and we could supply 200,000 people quite easily from that hub in Cormac, which is right up to you. Caroline, yeah, borders. What, what, if you don't mind me asking, what's the current take up in the, in the area? For our mm. thing, we started on the 1st of September with yeah. the meetings and we've got 200 and, you'll have to look on the website. Right, okay. A third, currently. A third. Oh. A third. Thank you. But, but we haven't finished the meetings yet. We've right. got the, the two biggest meetings still to come. We've got the Young Farmers meeting on Monday night. They'll, that's the Badger Your Dad meeting. Yes. So that will get the people who, you know. <laughs> But you see, people tend to wait until they've more information and then they forget. Are you expanding your network out towards Ingleton in that way, or is it just going to stay in the Ray Bantham area? Is that... uh, Ingleton's in Yorkshire. We do touch into Yorkshire. The edge mm. of our Wi Fi is in mm. Yorkshire and the, and, and the in Cumbria. Right. Um, so we are going into Yorkshire, but I would imagine the people of Ingleton think they've got broadband. That's the trouble. Right. Yeah. It, it's the really rurals we're doing, mm. and, and we're avoiding the villages with exchanges, we're not targeting them because they think they've got it. But the mm. funny thing is, it's the villages with exchanges who are contacting us and they're saying, oh we want it, we want it. And that's because they've got it, got it. Yeah. they're trying to use it and it's still not doing. They're on six or seven meg these villages because they're right near the exchange. And it's not doing what they want anymore because the kids are using it for iPlayer and the mother's using it for this and the father's using it for this. And, and the connection's chugged up. Are you conceptually bringing people in from the other part of the other areas locally to that? I know the area quite well, so do, do you bring people in to actually see what, what uh, your broadband actually gives you? How oh, can you? How <laughs> oh, can you? We haven't got it. That's the thing. Mm. So our last meeting, the, so all these meetings have been in village halls where they've no connectivity. And, and it's just been a PowerPoint and explaining mm. what it is. The last meeting is in Ray. Right. Well, it's actually the young farmers on Monday. It's the first time we'll actually show them what you can do because we'll be showing them Google Earth because Ray has got a connect mm -hmm. internet connection because yeah. the yeah. village network. Yeah. So we're going to show them Google Earth and we're going to say, what's your postcode? And put it in and they'll zoom into their house and lo and behold, there's a little yellow fibre going to their mm -hmm. house. And the kids will say, oh, great, we're on the map. I'll tell me dad, hopefully. And then the week after that, it's the Ray village parish party right. where hopefully all the rare people will come yes. and outlying villages who've heard about the Google right. uh, map and, and then they'll come and see it as well. It's an awful lot of work to do mm -hmm. but it's the only way we're going to get a decent internet connection.